Hello, everyone, and welcome to my lab. Are you ready to learn? Yeah. Are you ready to have some fun? Yeah. I want you to pay close attention to everything that's going to be happening. I don't want anyone to miss out on the excitement that we have when we do science experiments. We do them safely. I want you to look and see that I'm wearing my eye protection. I'm wearing my goggles, and I want you to see that I have a fire extinguisher right here, ready to be used, just in case something goes out of control. We're not planning on anything going out of control, but we have it as a safety precaution. You and I know where it is. I'm going to set it on the side here. It will be used if it is necessary to use. Now, when you came in to my lab, you saw lots of different items on the tabletop. You also saw, and you see right now, that we have some things up in the air. What do we have up in the air? Balloons. Well, how many balloons are there? Six. And are they all the same color? No. What do you suppose you might say if I ask you what's in the balloons? What might you say? Well, some of you are saying helium, and some of you might be saying there is a gas or gases lighter than air. That's why the balloons are tethered. They're up where they are. I'm going to tell you now that helium is a gas lighter than air, but does not burn. What we have here in this torch and in the candle are two examples of what we call a controlled combustion reaction. The wax in the candle is burning, and the natural gas. Actually, it's not natural gas. It's propane from this bottle that is burning. So what I'm going to do is try to find out what's in these balloons by putting the torch to this green balloon. Remember, now helium is a gas that does not burn. So we're going to find out what's in this balloon. I see some of you are covering your ears. <laughs> Why are you covering your ears? Because you might expect that there might be a loud sound. So let's find out and see what's going on. Here we go. So what happened? The balloon popped, right? And the flame went out, right? That balloon had in it the gas helium. In science, we always repeat the experiment. So that's what I'm going to do now. Repeat the experiment. You ready for this? Here we go. Did the same thing happen? Yeah. Exactly the same thing? Yeah. Yes, and the flame went out. So those two balloons had in them the gas, helium, and helium does not burn, does not get ignited. So we've got a yellow balloon here. Let's find out what's in this balloon here. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Did that balloon have helium in it? That balloon had in it the gas hydrogen, which combines with oxygens, with oxygen from the air, in an uncontrolled combustion reaction, which is what we just saw. And what do we always do in science? Let's repeat the experiment now, and let's do it in the dark. With the lights down, please. Let's do it in the dark. Here we go. You ready? Did you see that ball of fire? Did you see it better with the lights on or with the lights off? That's why when we do experiments that release energy in the form of light, we do them in the dark or in a darkened area rather than outdoors. And now I want you to watch the monitor because we're going to have a slow motion playback of the uncontrolled experiment we just saw. There's the you won't hear any sound. There's the flame, and there is that ball of fire. Did you like that? Yeah. You noticed that when we moved from the green balloons to the yellow balloons, there was this change in the amount of sound energy that we received, right? So we have two more red balloons, and we have lots of other experiments to do. What should I do next? More balloons or start with the other experiments? More balloons. More balloons. All right, we'll do more balloons. But you and I obey the safety rules. And that's why I want each one of you to take both fingers like this and stick them in your ears. 
to protect your ears from ear damage. I cannot do that and do the experiment at the same time. That's why I'm going to use this for my ear protection. All right. So here we go. That balloon had, it, had in it a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. It had more oxygen than is what's in the air. It had more than 20% oxygen. What do we always do in science? <laughs> Protect your ears. We're going to do this in the dark. You ready for this? Let's have a look at that last uncontrolled combustion reaction in slow motion. You won't hear the sound, but you'll see there's the flame approach. There is much faster than the previous one. Did you like that experiment? Yeah. All right. My next experiment is with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, of course, is a greenhouse gas. We know that. Carbon dioxide is also in all carbonated beverages. But I'm going to use carbon dioxide not as a gas, but in a solid form. And it's called dry ice. So I'm going to put my gloves on to protect my hands from frostbite. I don't want my skin to be damaged. I pick up a chunk of dry ice and put it right here. The temperature of dry ice is minus 78 degrees Celsius. It's really, really cold. And dry ice changes from being a solid to a gas directly without melting by a process we call sublimation. Can you say sublimation? Sublimation. Sublimation is happening right now, but we can't see it. Why we, can't we see it? Because carbon dioxide gas is mixing with air, which is a mixture of gases as well. So I ask you to focus your attention on what you see between my two hands right here. You see glass cylinders. There are six of them, and they have liquids in them. How do we know they're liquids? We just shake them up a little bit. We know from experience what liquid, liquids do when they're shaken. And they're arranged in pairs according to the color of the liquid in each cylinder. So this pair has what color? Blue. This one. Pink. This one. Let me ask you if you think this helps improve seeing the colors. Does this help? All right, all right, I'll put it there. So now I'm going to take chunks of dry ice and put them in the cylinders, and you'll see that I'm putting the dry ice in every other cylinder. Is anything happening? Do you see any bubbles? What kind of bubbles are those? The carbon dioxide bubbles, they're coming from the sublimation reaction. But we see them now because gas is mixing with liquid. You also see color changes. Those color changes tell us that a chemical reaction has taken place. And the colors are there because of dyes we put in there. And these dyes change color when the pH of the liquid changes. So carbon dioxide dissolved in water give us, gives us carbonic acid. And all the colors to begin with were colors when the liquids had a base in them. So we have acid-base indicators. And the color change indicates to us that a reaction has taken place. All right, so let me ask you a question. In this pair here, where I put the dry ice, the color changed from what to what? How about in this pair? Pink to what? Clear. This is a clear and colored liquid. This is a clear and colored liquid. This is clear and colorless. colorless. From now on, no one who comes to my lab will confuse the words clear and colorless. They don't mean the same thing, right? So let's now <clears throat> uh, focus on what's coming off the top here. It looks like smoke, but it's not smoke. You know what it is? It's really a mist. It's condensed water vapor. It's a fog. It's the same thing as the stuff that floats up in the sky 
What's the name of that white stuff floats up in a cloud? It's condensed water vapor. In this case, the water vapor is condensing on the carbon dioxide gas that's coming from the sublimation reaction. And we see this effect here. So let me put a couple of more chunks of dry ice here because I like the bubbling as much as you like bubbling. Do you like the bubbling? Yeah. All right, so there we go. So, so now I'm going to take this bucket of dry ice and move over here where I have a dishpan. It's empty except for air. And I have some water that is boiling. You see the water bubbles coming off there? I'm going to use my gloves now to protect my hands from heat. I'll take this flask that's full of boiling water and empty it into the dishpan. What do you see coming off the top? Steam is invisible. You cannot see steam. You're seeing condensed water vapor. <laughs> and the mist dissipates when the temperature of the hot water vapor gets to be the same as the uh, temperature on, in, the, in the atmosphere. So now I'm going to take the bucket of dry ice and dump it all the way in here. <laughs> I'm still here. This is how they make fog in the movies sometimes. They take boiling water, add dry ice to it, and they make fog. And you notice that the fog is moving downward, telling us that carbon dioxide gas is denser or heavier than air. And it makes all the nice bubbly sound that we see over here. You like this experiment? Yeah. I have several people doing research in my lab, and at this time, I would like you to meet one of them. Would you please welcome Juliana? Hi, Juliana. Hi, Lubasam. What do you have for us here? I have been working with the solutions in these flasks. Yes. What, and what do the solutions do? Well, well, what do you do with the solutions? I will show you. Look. Nice. So I had to shake it very, very strong. Yes. Now look what happens when I give it a little swirl. Whoa. Ah. W what's in those flasks, Juliana? Uh, this one has a uh, solution mixed with water, glucose, and potassium hydroxide. Th this first one? Yes. Okay. And it also has a blue dye called methylene blue. I see. So, so water, potassium hydroxide, glucose, and methylene blue. Yes. This one has the same exact thing, but with a dye called rosacerin. Rosacerin. Well, but what happened to the colors? Well, they're fading. Yes, I can see that. Uh, can, can you regenerate the color? I think so. Why don't you give, it, do you give it a try? Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah. All right. Why not? All right. Shake harder? Yes. Like this? Yes. All right. How about this one? I think you can just... Just, just do this? Yep. How about if I shake her? I think it happens the same. But now, look. Yeah, will the colors fade now? But not as fast. Well, what, what do we have to do? Just wait. Just wait. We'll be patient. Yes. Whenever we do scientific experiments, we have to be patient. Whenever we do anything worth doing in life, we have to pay attention <laughs> and be patient, right? And look at that. The colors are fading. Yes. So color changes give us an indication that there is a chemical reaction taking place. And you told us what the ingredients are. Yes. So, Juliana, I know you have a lot of other interests in addition to working in my lab. Yes. Uh, well, like what? Well, I am a musician and I play the bassoon. You play the bassoon? Yes. Did, did you, do you have it with you here? Yes. Let me look for it. Oh. All right. Oh, well, I only found the harness. Like, wait, wait, wait a second. All right. I have to wear this because it's very heavy. Uh-huh. And you don't need your goggles anymore. No, I don't because I'm not All going right. to be working with experiments. All right. Hold on. So here is the bassoon. Did you know it? Yes. So this is a woodwind instrument. So it's made out of? Yes, exactly. So you, you see that it has a lot of shiny little keys. If they are coated with silver. And what, I, what they do is that when I press them, they uh, cover and open some holes so that the air goes through and makes the notes uh, work. So when I play it, they, they just uh, make the sound 
uh, work. So I'm going to try and play something for you so you can hear it. Some, something's not working. Uh, I think I forgot something. Oh, there it is. So it looks like I need these little read to make it work. It sounds on its own. That's the best thing. Look. Beep! <laughs> Beep! So you see, that's what actually makes the sound in the bassoon. Juliana, would you please play something for us? Yes, of course, but I would like to invite my friend Ross to join me. That would be great. Ross. <laughs> we will be playing a duet from Giacomo Rossini uh, from one of his opera, operas, uh, The Barber of Seville. Thank you very much, Ross, and thank you, Juliana. Wasn't that beautiful? And now I'm going to do an experiment using this device that has a light bulb up here and two electrodes. It's plugged into the electric outlet, but I want to show you that the two electrodes are not touching each other. If I complete the circuit by using this metallic surface, you'll see that the light bulb comes on, okay? 
So anything that helps to complete the circuit will make the light come on. So I have two beakers that have a clear and colorless liquid in them. Actually, the liquid is water, and then two beakers that are empty except for air. So let's see whether water conducts the electric current. I don't see any glow. Do you see any glow? The second beaker also has water in it, and you see nothing glows. What I'm going to do is take some table salt, add the table salt in there. It dissolves. I'm going to stir it up a little bit. Not all of it has dissolved. Now let's see what happens. We learn that table salt solution conducts the electric current. So it has ions in it that are charged particles that carry the electric current across. All right, so before I do the next experiment, I don't want to contaminate anything, so I'm going to rinse the electrodes right here. And I'm going to use a household chemical. You can see what it is. What is it? Vinegar. vinegar. So I put the vinegar in this beaker, about that much. And now let's see what happens when I test the vinegar. I see a faint glow. Uh, can we turn the lights down, please, so everyone can see that there is a faint glow? Even darker, if you can, please. Thank you. <laughs> so vinegar, with the lights back up, please, vinegar is a weak conductor of the electric current. So with the lights up, please. Yes, thank you. And before I check the next household chemical that I have, I'm going to rinse the electrodes. The next one is, you can see what the next one is, right? What's the next one here? This one. All right, so I'm going to set the electrode right here. And I'm going to take the household ammonia, put in as much as I put in of the vinegar, and let's see what happens. Once again, there's a very light glow. Would the lights down, please? Now you can see the very, very weak glow telling us that household ammonia is also a weak conductor of the electric current. Would the lights up, please? Because now what I want to do is take the vinegar and mix it with the uh, ammonia, the household ammonia. So I'll keep the electrodes in there. Are you watching this very carefully? And I mix them like this. And I get a very strong conductor of the electric current. That tells us that when vinegar combines with household ammonia, we get ions. And these ions carry a lot of ions, and these ions uh, help conduct the electric current. So, all right. Did you like that experiment? Yeah. For my next experiment, I'm going to use this large glass beaker sitting on this platform. <clears throat> Inside the beaker, which has a volume of four liters, there's a magnet coated with Teflon. And I'm going to turn the motor on and turn the light on. And ah, I need to mix three things together. I only have two here. Where is the third one? I don't see, any, see it here. Could someone please bring out the third liquid that I need? Hello, oh, Bucky. Good to see you, Bucky. Bucky is a very good chemistry student. You see Bucky is wearing goggles, obeys the safety rules. And, and Bucky, I like that you have your science is fun button on there. So I, I know that you like science too. All right, Bucky, let, let's do the experiment. Let me do the experiment here. I'm going to add the first liquid. Here's the first liquid, clear and colorless. All right, you got your goggles on. I'm going to add the second one. Not anything much exciting happened. This is the volume increase, OK? How about you add your third liquid there, Bucky? Let's see what happens. All right, you ready? All right, add it. Just put it in, Bucky, like you've done before. All the way. Wow. Bucky, look at that. A beautiful blue color that we see right there.
and now it's yellow. Back to blue. You think it's going to change again, Becky? We just wait a little bit and see, right? There it goes again. Bucky, would you, would you, you like this one, Bucky, right? Yeah. Would you like me to tell the audience what's in there? Okay, so we have water, we have hydrogen peroxide, we have malonic acid, sulfuric acid, potassium iodide, manganese sulfate, potato starch is in there. The yellow color that you see now is the color of iodine. It combines with the potato starch. We get this beautiful dark blue color, which is characteristic of having iodine with starch. And the oscillations continue. This is a chemical oscillating reaction. And Bucky, this is one of my very favorite uh, chemical reactions. Bucky, I know that final exams are coming up, and you have to go study. But let me ask you before you leave, Bucky. How long is it going to take you to graduate? Four years? Yeah, you, yeah. You are going to graduate. That's why you came to UW, right? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Lift up, let me see. Lift up. Four. It's going to take you four years. Four years. Everyone should aim to finish in four years. All right. <laughs> Bucky, I wish you the best on your final exams. Thank you so much for coming by here. Thank you, Bucky. Thank you, Bucky. Now I'm going to do an experiment in this big porcelain dish. And I need one of my favorite items. A what? Balloon. What color is the balloon? Green. So this balloon is on what? What I'm going to do is take some liquid nitrogen, which is a very, very cold liquid, much colder than the dry ice. I'm going to take the balloon, put it right here. I'm going to, add, some of you are covering your ears again. Let's see. I add the liquid nitrogen. What happened to the balloon? The balloon collapsed, right? That's because the liquid nitrogen cooled down the helium. Wait a minute. I did cut the thread from it. Cooled down the helium atoms inside the balloon. So liquid nitrogen is a very, very cold liquid. And I'm going to do some more experiments with liquid nitrogen. I want to show you something about liquid nitrogen. It is very, very cold. It is the basis of the science cryogenics. And if I pick this up and I pour it on the tabletop, because the tabletop is warmer than the boiling point of the nitrogen, the liquid nitrogen, it evaporates. This is a good way to clean the tabletop here. <laughs> but I'm going to do some more experiments with the liquid nitrogen. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this flask. It's a thermos bottle, but it's unsilvered. And I'm going to put in it this copper coil that is connected to a tank that has in it gaseous oxygen. So I'm going to put this in here like so. I'm going to take some more liquid nitrogen, add the liquid nitrogen right here. You see it is bubbling because the coil and the thermos bottle are at a higher temperature than the boiling point of the liquid nitrogen. And I have more right here. So I'm going to cool it off, right, like so. And when the boiling stops, it means that they're at the same, temp at the same temperature as the a boiling point. So now I'm going to open this valve and let the gas uh, flow through. Here's a piece of plastic. It's flowing through. Now look what happened to the plastic. It got stiff, right? You see that? I'm going to take this test tube and collect the liquid that's coming through. 
Can you see the liquid? Yeah. What color is it? Blue. It's liquid oxygen. Liquid oxygen is being condensed in the liquid nitrogen. And so I'm going to take this out and put it right here and collect some more liquid oxygen. And you notice I'm very careful. I don't want to get any frostbite here. Look where I hold the test tube, right? I ran out of liquid nitrogen and my hand is getting cold. All right, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is take this out like so, put it here. And I'm going to take a little bit of liquid nitrogen that's left in here and pass it through this magnet. Before that, I want to show you this is a very strong magnet. It's a horn gap magnet. And I put my pocket knife there. You see it's stuck there. And I pull it out, pull it out. There it is. See? Sticks there. All right. So I'm going to take the liquid nitrogen. I put it through the poles of the magnet. And what happens? It just passes through. So the liquid nitrogen has no magnetic properties. My knife had magnetic properties. Now I'm going to take some of the liquid oxygen and put it there. You see the liquid held between the poles of the magnet? How many, how many of you have seen a liquid held between the poles of a magnet before? How many? How many? One, two, three. OK. How many have seen it now? Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> All right. Let's look at it again. Let's look at it again. So this tells us that liquid oxygen has magnetic properties. And what I want to do, I want to make a little bit more of the liquid uh, oxygen. So I'm going to go back to my experiment here. I put the coil in. It's flowing through. Yes, it's flowing through. I need to cool it off. So I cool it off, right? And then collect some more. Now you can't see it. Oops, it's moving too fast now. You can't see it because condensation is on the, on the outside of the. It's, it's getting cold. It's getting cold. It's really, really cold. All right, I'll put my gloves on. No accidents here. My gloves are cold now. All right, get this off. Collect some more. Any being collected? You see it? Yeah, I see it too. Not only do I see it, I feel it. So I have a little more liquid oxygen. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to take, close this off, take this out. And then I'm going to do something that is not allowed in my lab. And I'm only doing it for the purpose of an experiment. So I take this, strike the match. Take the beaker, empty. Put the cigarette in there. Take the liquid oxygen. And there you have the complete combustion of the cigarette. <laughs> Which is what all of us should do with all cigarettes. <laughs> whenever, whenever we work with very cold temperatures. Oh. Feliz Navidad! Pro Weihnachten! Everyone having fun? Yeah. yeah! And why is that? Because science is fun! Hello, Santa! Hello, the Wel club. Welcome to my lab! Thank you for I'm having me. I'm so happy to see you, Santa. Did you get my list? That long list? Oh, was it all that long? Oh, hey, I've been good. Haven't I been good? Yeah. All right. Did I get anything, Santa? I think the elves packed something in here just for you. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, here wow. Oh, wow. Yes, I wanted this. <laughs> I wanted this. This is, this is, 
I know what to do with it too, Santa. Oh, watch. Show us. Watch. I do this, do this, set it down. You see the red beads are going to the top or the bottom? Uh, Pay attention, right? <laughs> the red beads are going to the bottom and the white ones are going to the top. But now what are the red beads doing? They're rising back again and the white ones are going down. Can I give it a try? You can give it a try. The elves made this while I wasn't paying attention. Can you tell us about it? <laughs> yes, I'm happy to tell you about it. So there are two liquids in there. One is a salt solution, and the other one is rubbing alcohol. And the white beads and the red beads have different densities. So when we mix them together, like you and I did, Santa, we see the effect, and then when they settle down, they get back to float the way that you brought them in. Did I get anything else, Santa? You did. I think we have one more thing. Only one? Only one this year. Well, I know you're a busy... Oh, thank you, Santa. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is... Let's see. Is this what I think it is? Yes. It is this ball, white ball, with the um, string on it. So what I'd like to do is turn the switch on. And now I see a light. Can we turn the lights down so everybody can see? What? Yeah. Can you see a light now? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Santa. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what I re really wanted to get. Thank you, Santa. The so, elves are making all sorts of exciting things this year, aren't they? Yes, they are, and they're very good at it too. Yeah. Does this uh, remind you of something else, Santa? It does. It reminds me of the ornaments the elves are making at the North Pole. Yes. And we were wondering if you could show us how to make some really shiny ones. Real shiny ones? Real shiny. You've come to the right place, Santa. Come <laughs> with me. So what we have here is goggles for you, right? Santa and needs safety glasses. And Yeah, you have those. And there's a pair of gloves right over there, if you could oh. uh, reach for those, because I need this pair right here. And we have these two round bottom flasks that we're going to do an experiment in. I want to keep these for myself here, so I'm going to set them right here. And so what I'd like you to do is pick up this flask, yours, come over here. What we have here is water. It's actually hot water. We're going to dump the water out. Like this? Like this, yeah, all the way. Just dump it out into the sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it's empty, we go back to where we started. And then we take the liquid that is in the beaker and put it in the flask. Yeah, just pour it in. You like doing chemistry, Santa, don't you? I do. Yeah. Well, then take the next one, please. And add that in. And then put the rubber stopper on top. And start mixing the chemicals together. Oh, it's getting dark. Yes, mine is getting dark, too. And shiny. Whoa. I can see myself. You wanted shiny ornaments, Santa. Did I you? did. The yeah. elves will love this. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Very nice. Thank you, Santa. I, I hope you can uh, tell the elves about this. And I know you have so many other stops that you have to make. So thank you so much for coming here. And, and I appreciate your uh, getting me the gifts that you gave me. Thank, thank you, you so for much. Having me. Th thank you, Santa. Do you mind if I take one to go? Oh, take the one you made. Of course, it's yours. Thank you. It's yours. I need to show the elves this. Maybe they'll get it right this year. I hope they like it. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Happy holidays! Happy holidays! Hey, Rudolph, look what I got. <laughs> At this time, I would like you to welcome my longtime colleague and friend, Dr. Rodney Schreiner. Rod?
right. Hello, Bassam. Happy to see you. I'm happy to be here and celebrating this 46th anniversary of your program. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very proud of that. Thank you. You know, Bassam and I are chemists, and we like to celebrate anniversaries with the element that corresponds, the element whose atomic number matches the anniversary. Do you know which element is it, number 46? Palladium. Palladium, palladium yes. Palladium is the element, yes. And because palladium is element number 46, in yes. honor of this, I yeah. brought a sample of palladium for wow. you. Wow. And it is a silvery metal, as yes. you can see. Yes. Uh, I didn't bring very much of it. How come? Is, is it expensive? Uh, palladium is very expensive, yes. I checked the price of it just on Friday, and it was uh, $540 per ounce. So this vial contains one gram of palladium, which is worth about 30 bucks. Do I get to keep it? Yeah, yeah of course. It's okay. for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You know, one reason palladium is expensive is that it is very useful chemically. In fact, most of the palladium that's produced every year is used in the catalytic converters in automobiles. What does that do? Well, it helps to convert the gases, the poisonous gases that come out of the engine, into less harmful and, and safer chemicals. It's better for us to breathe then. Right, and we don't get smog and all sorts of other kinds of pollution in the air. Less pollution. Right. So palladium is valuable as a catalyst, and I want to show you it working as a catalyst, not in an automobile converter, but with another gas. All right. So I have a reactor here. I have a reactor, which is a little beaker, which has an arm that goes down to the bottom. And I'm going to use hydrogen gas in this uh, container. It's the gas which palladium is going to work as a catalyst. So we need some hydrogen. Is this open? Oh, it is, but that's too much. Too much? That's too much. Let's turn it down because we all know hydrogen's quite flammable, and we don't want a really big fire. We want just a little fire, but there you are. Uh, so now you can hear hydrogen is flowing through this beaker, goes in the side, down to the bottom, and then comes out the top. I can actually feel it here, and you could hear it. And nothing is happening because no, there's nothing there to ignite it. But you said you have a catalyst. Yes, I'm going to turn this off. Turn it off. Yes. Okay. Make sure there's no hydrogen in it. All right. And here's the catalyst. It's palladium black. So this contains the same material as that, but rather than uh, being pure metal, it is the metal coated on carbon. So it's going to look different than the metal. It won't look like a metal, but it is palladium. And there's actually less palladium in this bottle than there is in the vial. So I'll put some of this catalyst in the bottom. And you can see it's black. I see this black coloration, yeah. And now I'm going to turn the hydrogen back on. And let's see what happens. No heat, just palladium catalyst. Whoa. What no happened? Heat. You just turned the valve? I just turned the valve. So you let the stream of hydrogen in? Yes. And it, and wow. What's the palladium doing? The palladium is making the reaction and beginning the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen in the air. So the hydrogen is burning in air. And we might be able to see this better in the dark. So if I could have the lights down, I will turn on the hydrogen. There, nice big flame. Turn off the hydrogen, flame goes away. No heat now, turn on the hydrogen. Yeah, I agree, wow. Thank you. I've been doing uh, an experiment with another metal here. Uh, this metal is iron, much less expensive than palladium, and it's in the form of a pipe. And what I've discovered with my experiments is that I can make sound with this pipe by passing gas through the pipe. But it needs to be one hot gas, and it needs to flow very fast. So one way we can get that is with a burner. Here's a burner. 
and I will ask you to light the burner. Light the burner? Yes. Okay. Okay, the burner's on, so that's hot, and it's gas flowing very fast, and I will have it go through the pipe, and you can hear a little bit of noise, sound of the gas going through, but uh, you can probably hear it better if the torch isn't on, so I'll take the pipe off. sort of a deep whistling sound. And it goes on for quite a while. <laughs> but it doesn't continue forever. So eventually it runs out of hot gas and it stops. <laughs> but while I was doing this experiment, I discovered I can pour sound. You can what? I can pour sound. It's like pouring water from a cup. No way. I can pour sound, yes. Want to see? Yeah, yeah I want to see. OK, well, so we need sound first. So oh. if you'd like the torch. Back to this? Yes. Let's get some sound from my pipe. And I can tell when it's, uh, the gas is really hot and flowing through because I can feel it's getting warm here. That's probably warm enough. Pour some sound into this cup. And then I'll pour it back. Into the cup. Pour it back. Into the cup. Another thing I discovered is sound is invisible, so I can't tell if I'm spilling it. I must have spilled it. Because it's all done now. I admit, that's a bit of a trick. Uh, there's actually some science behind what I'm doing. Do you want to know how this works? Yes. This pipe is not an empty pipe. There's actually something inside. Uh, near the end of the pipe, ooh, that's hot. You know that? That's hot. Near the end of the pipe is a uh, gauze. Let's see, can I get you there? You yeah. can, perhaps you can see that. There's a gauze, a metal gauze inside. And when I... Uh, put that over the flame, the gauze gets really hot. And let's do this again. Again. When it gets really hot, as it is right now getting hot, when I take it off, the hot gauze heats the air, makes it less dense, and it rises through the tube. If I turn the tube sideways, it can't rise. But if I hold the tube vertically, it can rise. Uh, this cup had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brad. Thank you. For my next experiment, I'm going to use a very long spiral glass assembly that's connected to a funnel at the top and at the bottom there's a large beaker. There's the funnel, spiral glass assembly and a beaker and I'm going to mix two liquids, a clear and colorless liquid with a clear and colored liquid and I'm going to do the mixing in the dark. So can we have the lights down, please? All the way down, there you go. <laughs> this is the release of energy in the form of light, but not in the form of heat. This is the phenomenon we call chemiluminescence. Chemiluminescence is related to bioluminescence, and most of us know about bioluminescence because we know about the firefly reaction. <laughs> At this time, I would like you to welcome our chemistry department lecture demonstrator, Mr. Jim Maynard. Jim. <laughs> Hi, Jim. What do you have for us today? OK, so this is my experiment for today. So I have this really large glass tube, and it has a rubber stopper on the bottom, and it has a rubber stopper on the top. 
and inside is a clear to colorless gas. What's, what's the name of the gas? Uh, it's nitrous oxide. And what about these water droplets? Uh, that's, are, are they water droplets? They are water droplets. They are. And uh, they're just there because of, it takes a little work to fill it. All right. So let's begin my experiment, shall we? Yeah. I'm going to add to this nitrous oxide uh, a small amount of a clear and colorless liquid. Uh, this is called carbon disulfide. It's a foul smelling liquid and I only need a little of it so I'm going to transfer it with a syringe. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to get up here. So that is what I will do. So you're going to put the carbon disulfide liquid into this long glass tube that uh, has in it nitrous oxide and a little bit of water drop. Indeed. Yeah. That is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to withdraw a small amount. Yeah. It doesn't take a whole lot. And I am going to introduce it to the gas inside here. So you may notice uh, the liquid now flowing down into the tube. And it has a very high vapor pressure. And now I'm going to take this mixture and mix it a little bit. Okay, one, two, and a half. OK, I think it's sufficiently mixed to do the experiment now. If you could hand me that torch this and one. with the lights down. Yes, right. please, this torch with indeed. With the lights down? OK. All the way down. All right, one, two, three. <laughs> And then uh, we see the sulfur. Yeah, that is the inside. A sulfur solid. Yeah, yeah. And then the other two products are nitrogen gas and carbon dioxide. It's a very exothermic reaction. Let's have a quick look at the monitor and watch it in slow motion. You will not hear any sound, but you'll see the flame going down and Jim getting out of the way. There, you see? There, there it is. Uh, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. My next experiment is going to be done using these plastic bottles that have screws stuck on the side, and there's a cork on top. But the screws are not touching on the inside. Let me show you a cutout of what, goes, what, what we have there. You see? The screws are not touching on the inside at all. Each one of these two plastic bottles have a small amount of a clear and colorless liquid in there. And this liquid has a vapor pressure. And I'm going to use a device that generates a spark. It's called a Tesla coil. There's a spark that's coming off here. You can't see it right now. But what I'm going to do is touch one of the screws and see if I can make the spark jump across the gap that separates the two screws, and we'll see what happens. You ready for this? Here we go. Whoa. And let's do it again. Whoa. You like that? Yeah. Are you ready? Sure, you're ready. Yeah. You've been a great audience helping celebrate this very special anniversary, and I want you all to remember no matter what you do, as you do the experiments carefully, to be paying attention to what goes on. And to also remember. <laughs> science is fun. Thank you all very much. Thank you, thank you.
you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you.